I'm Catherine Sturrock and I'm here today at the Katie Sue headquarters. I'm going to introduce to you some moulds. It's the Mermaid and Friends collection. Uh, this is part of the Sugar Buttons range. I'm just going to bring in one of the samples to show you. And you can see here I've used um, all of the characters from the collection. We've got the mermaid herself. We've also got the crab, little fish. We've got the octopus. He's a, a really good, fun character. We've got the starfish, and there's a couple of different sizes of those, slightly different faces on them as well. So you've, you've get in a lot with these moulds. And also the seahorse. So I'm going to talk you through how you can work with these moulds, give you some good hints and tips. So I hope you can stay watching and uh, craft along with me. I'm going to introduce you to the crab and fish mould. Now the first thing we're going to do is just dust the mould with a little bit of corn flour. So I'm using a soft brush, a small amount of corn flour, and I'm just going to dust inside the mould. We'll do the fish at the same time. You'll also notice this little area of the mould here is actually the eyes to the crab. So you can use those separately, so maybe you want to put them into a shell or something like that, or peeking out from behind a rock, they can be used as an individual item. But I'm going to show you how to build up the crab as a whole, and also how to put the different colours in and create something really quite, quite clever. Right, so I'm just going to dust out the mould and then tap out any excess. The reason we put the cornflour in there is to make sure that there's no moisture in the mould itself, because that would make the clay stick. I'm using some hearty clay and this was white clay and I've mixed it with a little bit of brown and also some orange. You can decide on the colour that you want to make. I'm just going to bring in one of my little crab friends here and show you. This one's a, a slightly darker colour. This one is uh, actually finished. So as the clay is wet you can position the claws at the front, maybe give him a fish that is caught or something like that or he be, could be climbing in the rocks. But it's a very easy mould to use. So we're going to start with the main colour and I always recommend working with the main colour of whatever character you're making. So obviously with the crab there's very few colours in it. So I'm just going to pop that clay straight into the centre there and start to work that into the claws. So it's very easy just to work with one piece of clay but if you did need to join little bits you could actually add, add separate pieces in. If you need to build the clay up into the mould, maybe if you've not quite got enough you can top it up separately. So you can see I'm just working that right in with fingertips. If you feel you need to use a tool just to help get into the, the little claws there, you can use something like a Dresden tool or a ball tool. I'm using a, a metal clay tool, um, but really it's just the same sort of tool as a Dresden tool, which are normally made of plastic. So I'm just making sure that everything's well compacted down. We don't want to miss any bits of detail. So I tend to use fingertips mainly and then use the tool just for the smaller areas. Now the clay itself I've allowed to dry quite a lot. What I find is if you, if you work with the clay straight from the pack it can be a little bit too wet. So allowing it to dry a little bit first will make sure that it will release from the mould a lot easier. So I'm just looking at the two bat legs there and I can see there's some little gaps so I'm just going to take a couple of extra bits of clay and just top those up to make sure that they're nice and compacted down. And obviously we're looking at the back of the mould here, not the front, so if you're going to stick this onto a project it doesn't have to look particularly pretty, but the fact that we're working with one colour here, it just, uh, it just looks the same all the way across there. So I am going to use a rolling pin just to press on the back there, just roll it across. You can put quite a lot of pressure onto these moulds, you're not going to damage them at all. But you do want to make sure that the surface is nice and flat across the mould itself. And then using a fingertip, just start to work around the edge, just pulling the clay inwards. This will give you a nice clean edge and also will help when you come to release the clay itself. So I'll just work quickly around the edge there and then we can release the clay. Now if you were going to do the fish as well, I would use the, do those separately. Always work with one piece and then you're not going to distort the clay when you, you're actually flexing the mould. So I'm just working with the crab itself here. So using the outer lip, I'm just going to work my way around and you can see there, if I just hold it up so you can see it there, it's coming away nice and cleanly because the clay is not too wet, it's just popping upwards. So just keep flexing the mould 
and you can more or less just tip that straight out or just give it a helping hand with your fingertips and there we've got the main body of the crab. So we're going to move on to the eyes themselves now. So I'm just going to put that to one side and bring in some black and some white because I'm going to show you how to build up the colours so you don't need to paint these separately. So here we've got the eye area of the mould for the little crab. Now I'm going to ignore the black pieces, the pupils of the eyes. I'm going to put those in separately. I'm just turning the mould around so it will look a little bit upside down to you, but I can see better. So I'm just going to use a little bit of white clay. Just push it into the mould, into the eye area. You can see clearly where the, the defining lines are between the different areas. So I look at those areas that I want to fill and try and pick up a piece of clay that's more or less the right size. You don't want to overfill at this point, otherwise when you put another colour on top, you will see a bleed of colours. So slightly better to underfill than overfill, I would say. So what I've done there is I've filled the area with the white. If I just point that out with the tool, and just bring it up a little bit closer, you can see that we've got that in position. And then I'm going to go back to the main colour of the crab itself. And again, I'm looking at the size that I need and I'm going to gauge that rather than going in with a great big piece of clay and then removing it. I'm just going to pop a little piece in that's been rolled more or less to the right shape. Press that down firmly. If you need to top up a little bit, you can. Because again, you want that nice and even with the top of the mould. You don't really need a rolling pin for this bit because it's such a small piece. But again, just around the edge with a fingertip just to make sure you've got that nice clean edge and then flex the mould and just take, take those out. So we can see now we've got the, the eyes and the upper part of the, the head of the crab. So we're going to finish the eyes off with some black clay now. So rather than making it difficult and trying to get the black clay in separately, I tend to go in just with the white and then take two tiny pieces of black clay and roll those into a ball with a fingertip and then just flatten and then pop those over the top. So I'm using the markings of the mould itself as a guideline. So you want to try and get the two eyeballs more or less the same size. You can slightly change the position if you like, if you want to make him look a little bit more quirky. And you can see we've got the pupils in place there. They can then just be placed on top of the clay. Now you don't normally need any glue um, because the clay is normally wet enough for the clay to stick to itself. But if it has become a little bit dry, I'm just going to show you. I could actually just stick this as it is, but I'm just going to show you a tiny bit of PVA glue. You want the smallest amount because the glue can make the clay go very sticky. So if you want to just safeguard that's in position and it's not going to fall apart, you can add that glue if you prefer. So now we've got the, the eyes in position and we're just going to finish off with two little white highlights. And this brings the, the face to life and gives the, the little crab a bit more personality. So I'm using a cocktail stick and I've just dipped the end into a, a, a lid of uh, acrylic paint. I've just shaken the paint up and taken the lid off and I'm just using the lid to work from. And then two little white dots will bring the highlights into the eyes and that's your little crab complete. I'm now going to show you how to make the little fish. This is part of the crab and fish mould. And we've got two different sizes. We've got one that faces to the left and one that faces to the right. So entirely up to you the colours you use. So you could maybe mix a colour of clay as just one colour, put the clay into the mould and then paint the detail on. But I'm actually going to show you in this video how you can build the colours up. There's, there's very few colours in it, so it's quite an easy task. So I'm just going to pop these pre-made fish to the side. I'm going to bring in some of the clay. This is the colour that I used for the crab. So I'm going to use this as part of the detail on the fish. And also some of the orange hearty clay. This is straight from the pack, so it's a nice colour for the little fish. But obviously you could change or mix the two colours together and get various different shades. So I'm going to work with this larger fish. The small one works in exactly the same way. And I'm going to start by building up the detail first. So I'm going to use the yellowy brown that I mixed for the crab. So I'm looking at the areas of the mould itself and I don't want to mix too much or, or place too much into the mould to start with. So I'm going to start with the fin 
that's just here. So I'm looking at the shape and just taking a small amount of clay. I don't want to overfill this area. So I'm using my tool. It's, this is very similar to a Dresden tool. So you can use your plastic cake decorating tools. You can use the rounded end of a paintbrush or maybe a ball tool or something. You, you're bound to have something in your stash that you can use if you need a little help in hand other than your fingertips to place the clay into these areas. So I'm just pushing that in there. It doesn't have to be particularly neat at the back as long as I'm filling that area and keeping within that defined line. One more thing I need to do and that is use a little bit of white for the fish's eye. Again if you prefer, if you find it a little bit tricky if you've not done this before, you could paint this in afterwards. But I like to use the clay and see the finished result once I release it from the mould. So again a small amount of clay and just pop that into the eye area of the little fish. And then we're ready for the main colour. So I'm going to use the orange. This has been allowed to air dry slightly so it's not too wet. If ever you find that you're flexing the mould and the clay is not lifting cleanly, then it's usually because the clay is a little bit too wet. So just let it air dry for a few minutes and then go with it again. Right, so I'm looking at the shape of the fish and I can see obviously it's wider where the head is and thins out at the tail. So I've, I've already sort of moulded that some, to a similar shape, it just makes it easier because I don't want to disturb the clay that's already in there. So I'm just going to pop that into place and press that down just so, again, we're anchoring the clay that's already there. And then if it helps, you can go over the top with a rolling pin. We want to make sure we pick up all that detail. Then with a the fingertip, just work around the edge, just pulling in the clay to give that nice, clean finish. And then we're ready to flex the mould. So as we normally do, just use that nice flexible lip around the edge just to pull down and you can see because the clay again is nice and um, dry it's not too wet that's just going to come out really easily and there we've got our little fish all it needs now is the eye to be completed so we've got the eyeball in there so i'm using a small amount of black and i can see the area where the eyeball should be you will notice there's a distinct line between the main eye and the eyeball itself. And I'm just going to add that over the top using the markings as a guideline. And you'll find that's a much easier way to complete the eye. And then as I do with all of the characters, I'm just going to use a little bit of white paint and I'm using a cocktail stick with a sharp point just to pick up the smallest amount of paint and dot into the eye to give the fish a little highlight. Just pick that up for you so you can see it. Let's put it on the back of the mould and bring that a bit closer so you can see. And then if you wanted to reposition the tail a little bit, you could do. While the clay is wet, you, you will be able to manipulate the clay and change the position of things. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the octopus mould. This is from the Sugar Buttons Mermaid and Friends collection. And it's a nice fun character, um, very easy to use actually because you don't need a lot of colours in this one. So rather than using one colour and then painting the details, you can do it all in one go. So what I've done, I've taken some of the white hearty clay and some of the green. It's the bright green and I've mixed the colour together so it's given me this really fresh colour. But obviously you can choose the colour, it's exactly up to you. So taking the clay, I'm just going to roll that so it's nice and smooth, just checking that the moisture has been released in there and it's nice and pliable but not too wet. If the clay was too wet you may find that when you flex the mould you have more trouble getting it out. So just allow the clay maybe to sit and air dry for a few minutes. Another little bit of prep that we always do is use corn flour and just dust out the mould. And This will ensure that if there's any moisture in there it will just take care of that. Any moisture in the mould would mean that the clay would stick to it. So if you'd maybe have these in the dishwasher or you'd wash them out in a bowl of water, you want to make sure that they are really nice and dry. So now we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is just take a piece of the clay 
and because the the face area has got some detail in there sometimes when you flex the mold you can distort the features a little bit so I tend to put the head in first and make sure that's in place and then you can continue to build up the other colours. Using the outer lip of the mould, I'm starting to work my way around. Now, if the clay was a little bit too wet at this stage, then you may find that the, the tentacles or the legs of the octopus were bending with the mould. What you want to find is that it's just popping upwards like that. And that's because the clay has dried out a little bit and it makes it much easier to remove it. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a helping hand just by lifting out those tentacles at one side and releasing at the other. So you can see we've got a very happy looking octopus there. And then I'm going to show you how to put some extra detail in. So we've got these markings on each of its legs. So you could just paint those, you could leave them as they are, you could paint them. But sometimes I like to bring out the colour in a different way. So if I just bring in one that I've done earlier, you can see that the little white markings have been recreated and that's very easy to do. So it doesn't take ever such a long time. So I'm going to start to show you how to do that. So by taking very small amounts of clay and just rolling with the fingertip, I'm using a ball tool and I'm going to pick up with the ball tool, let's go with a smaller one, and place over the top and then just push into position. Now, you do want to make sure the clay is nice and wet when you do this, so it sticks to itself. You don't want to be using any glue. So if you find the clay does dry out a little bit, then you can just add some water. Just spritz with some water and work that into the clay. And that will soften it again and bring it back and give it more pliability. So I would obviously continue there until we've created the finished look. But I want to do I want to show you as well how to put those eyes in. So I am going to use the clay to do that rather than painting them in. You'll notice with the octopus, although there are markings in there, there are hollows where the eyes are. So it does allow you to put a little bit of clay in rather than just paint them. So again, looking at the size of them, I'm taking a ball of clay and it wants to be no bigger than the actual eye itself. So I'm going to use a cocktail stick for this. I just find it a tool that's a little bit easier to work with. And because it's got a point on it, you can actually pick up that ball of clay. So I'm just going to pop one in, we'll do the other side, and then I'll neaten those off a little bit. And again, you want to try and get them the same size. And just use that cocktail stick as a tool. Now I'm going to go in with a ball tool. Or again, you could use the rounded end of a paintbrush just to push those down. It just gives a neater look if you just round them off a little bit. And then from there, we're going to add the pupil of the eye, which is going to be black. So this is just black hearty clay. If you don't have the black, you could just paint this in. Or maybe use a seed bead. That's another good method. Oops, clay does like to bounce a little bit. Right, so again, I'm just going to take a cocktail stick and just place that in position. Let's take a little bit off that one. I think it's slightly bigger. Again, rolling with the fingertip and using that cocktail stick is a great tool for placement. And once again, we'll just round that off and push that down a little bit, just so the two colours are stuck together nicely. And then we're ready for the final little bit of detail, which is the trick that I use with the cocktail stick point and some white acrylic paint. And just by dipping the point of the stick in the paint, you can then add the highlights to the eyes. Just top that one up a little bit. And there you've got the highlights in the eyes which brings brings the character to life. Another little trick that I do, and I do this on most of the characters, almost all of them, is a little bit of blush on the face. So I'm using, this is actually a blush, but you can use any craft chalks. I'm just adding a little bit of pink around the cheek area. Again, 
adds some detail and brings the face to life. It just warms it up a little bit. I'm going to work with the sugar butter seahorse and starfish mould. I'm going to start with the starfish. You do actually get two different ones. They're slightly different in size and also the facial features are slightly different also. So very easy to work with this mould, just like the other uh, Mermaid and Friends collection. So I've already mixed some clay. This is some of the orange hearty mixed with a little bit of the white. You could always change the tone of it by adding some yellow or brown as well, or just use the clay straight from the pack. Of course, if you don't have the colours, you could use the white clay and paint the finished pieces. It does work very well to build up the colours, so I'm going to show you how to do that with this mould, just so that you get an immediate um, result from taking the clay from the mould itself. So the only area I'm going to fill uh, with a colour other than the main colour is the eye area. So what I'm going to do, I'm just looking at this one, and this is the larger starfish, and we've got two little eyelid areas and also the main eye area. So I'm just going to use a small amount of white clay to fill the main eye area. Now, although there is a little pupil, I tend to ignore that and add that afterwards. So I'm just going in with the white. So I'm looking at the area I want to fill, and then I'm going to take a certain, a certain amount of clay, obviously not too much, I tend to roll it into a ball and use the tool to place that and just push that into place. So you can see a line in the mould where the eye finishes and the eyelid area begins. So I just want to fill that small area at the bottom. I do find it works best just to roll the clay into a little ball and then pick it up with a tool and then flatten it in from there. Just be careful not to overfill this area because that would just cause a little bit of bleed of colours together if it was if it was overfilled. So if you find it doesn't quite fit and there's too much, just take it out, remove a little bit of the clay and then go in again. So I'm just neatening up at the bottom there. I want to make sure that's just sits nicely in the right area. And then we can go in with the main colour. So I'm going to take a piece of the clay, roll it into a nice smooth ball and flatten it out slightly. And what I'm going to do is place that directly into the centre of the mould. And the reason I've done it that way is to lock down those little bits of white in the middle to stop them moving around. Now I did allow the clay to dry a little bit first. I didn't use it straight from the pack because it can be a little bit too wet and then it makes it harder to get it from the mould. So as long as it's it's been out in the air, maybe just for five minutes, something like that, you'll find it does make it much easier to remove from the mould. So I'm just flexing around the edge and we can literally just tip that out. So you can see we've got the eye area and if I just pick up my tool again you can point out, hopefully you can see there, you can just see the outline where the pupils are. So you could paint those in or fill them with clay, which is my favourite way of doing it. And again, I'm using those lines as a guideline and I'm just taking a small amount of clay, flattening it with a fingertip and just popping that over the top. So if you wanted to make the eyes a little bit larger, you could do. Just use the, the mould outline as a guideline. You don't have to work exactly to it if you're doing it this way. It just changes the character if you give different size eyes. So we've got those in place. And then the only other thing I need to do is just put the little white highlights in the eyes. The starfish have got very smiley faces, so they're good fun characters and they make great additions with the other characters in the Mermaid and Friends collection. This tutorial is going to show you how to work with the Sugar Button Seahorse. So once again, as with any of the moulds, you can create this using one colour clay and then painting the detail, or you can build the details up in different colours. It's one of those characters, again, where there's not an awful lot of colours in there, unless, of course, you want a multicolour seahorse. So I am going to show you the method of building up the different layers. So the fin on the centre of the body there is quite an easy area to work with. You can see it's quite deep, so it's just a case of pressing down the clay and working within the area that's defined for that fin. I'm also going to fill just the little eyelid area so you can see the main eye and that little half circle just above it. So I'm just pressing down the clay into there. Again, if you find this a little bit tricky, then you can paint that in afterwards. We have also got this back fin here 
which I'm going to fill in in a little while, but I'm not going to do it just yet. The reason being, because it's higher up in the mould, I can fill the main body before I work with that area. Now I am going to give my seahorse a little bit of a white tummy area as well, but I'm going to blend the colours on purpose a little bit there. Before I put the next colour in, I'm just going to fill the main eye with uh, the white clay as well. Now, although there is a an eyeball, I'm ignoring that and just going straight in with the white. We'll add the, the little black pupil afterwards. So we pop the little bit of white in there and then we're ready to go with the, the main colour, which is this lighter blue. So again, it's white hearty clay mixed with some of the bright blue clay. You need the smallest amount of clay to make the colour change because it's very highly pigmented. So a very small amount, you can always build the colour up. Now often as I do, when I'm building colours up, I like to anchor what's already in the mould. So I'm taking some of the clay and I'm just going to push that directly over the top of those areas that I've already filled, just so that they're nicely anchored down, they're not going to move around now. And then I can begin to top up the rest of the areas. I'm ignoring the back fin because I'm going to put some of the darker blue there. If it overlaps slightly, don't worry about it, we can pull that back. But I want to fill down right to the tail. And then what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm going to pull away from the fin area and we're going to put that in next just so we've got that in place. So once again you can see a really nice clear defining line. So I'm just pulling that back with the tool and we'll go over the top with the darker blue. Doesn't matter if you overlap the colours now. As long as the colours go in the correct order into the bottom of the mould, the back of it isn't really so important because you're going to stick it onto your project. Now the only other thing I'm going to do with the colour is pull away a little bit in that tummy area to reveal some of the detail there. Now you could go with one colour there, you don't have to do this, but I do like to see that little bit of a change. And I'm using the tool just to slightly flatten some of that clay back down. The reason I'm doing that, it will give me sort of a blended effect that's there on purpose rather than it be in a straight line. Again, this is choice. It's worth just playing around with the moulds, have fun just practising with them, trying different techniques and seeing how the characters look. If you don't like what you've done, you can always roll the clay back up and use it again. So now I'm taking some of the white and I'm just going to fill in that little area and then start to press the clay back down. So we're looking for a nice even level of clay across the top of the mould there. I am going to use a rolling pin just to make sure that that's really compacted and then we're ready to release the clay. So as usual work with a fingertip just to clean the outline. Make sure you've got rid of any little tags of clay that may be hanging over the edge there and we're ready to release the clay. So as usual, we're going to just flex around the edge. The moulds are very, very easy to work with and that outer lip really helps. You can see how that's just going to come away. And there's our seahorse. And you can see what's happened there where I blended the two colours. Instead of a straight line, we've got sort of that effect as other two colours are blending. So all we need to do now is finish the little eye off and then add in any extra detail onto these, these little areas here. The way I normally like to do the eye is just to add that pupil afterwards. So the tiniest ball of clay and then flatten with a finger. I'm just going to drop that onto the mat and do it. If the clay is a little bit dry, just dampen it slightly to make sure that it sticks. So now we've got this pupil in. You can position him slightly if you like. So if you want to bring the mouth closed, you can do that. You could curl his tail a little bit more or change the position of the head. But actually the position he's in is, is just perfect for a little seahorse. So in this instance I'm just going to use a little bit of shimmer paint and I've chosen a green, it's got a slightly gold effect in it and I'm just going to catch that onto those areas there and just bring in a, a second colour.
that was dried earlier just so you can see it with the shimmer paint so you can see the effect has started to come out more now on this one I didn't use any white on it at all I've just gone straight in with the main color so you can see the two different versions there and the difference that it makes using the different colors I'm going to show you how to work with the mermaid and this is one of the well this is actually probably the start of the show from the sugar buttons mermaid and friends collection for this tutorial I'm going to show how to build the mermaid up with the different layers of colour. So rather than working with one colour, the flesh tone and then painting the detail, we're going to build up the layers on this one. So if you've never done this before, it's really worthwhile having a little bit of a practice first, but you get a, an instant result once you take the clay from the, from the mould itself rather than having to add the detail afterwards. So the colours I'm going to use for this are the flesh tone for the, the skin, I'm going to use this green for the outfit and the tail, a little bit of black and white for the eye and also a dark brown for the hair. Now the brown is the brown hearty clay straight from the pack. I've not mixed that at all. That's exactly as it comes from the pack. So if you wanted a lighter shade, you could add that to white. You could maybe put a little bit of yellow in it. Try experimenting with different colours. So we're going to look and think, well, which colour will we start with first? Well, the easiest way to explain how to do this and how to work this out is to look at the deepest parts of the mould. So the deepest parts would be the bikini top or maybe the hair so we could start with either of those or we could start with the tail actually as well because we've got a nice dividing line there so I am actually going to start with that I'm going to start with the tail so we've got that in there ready to go there is this little bikini top here that's going to be also green but I'm not going to put that in there just yet I'm going to work on the hair first and go back to that a little bit right so now this is the trickiest bit probably on the hair just to decide you know how far you fill so what I tend to say is don't worry about it don't overthink it if you miss any areas then you can go back and correct it once the clay is out of the mold and I'm going to purposely leave one or two little areas so I, you can see clearly what I mean by that. So I am using the tool just at the moment just to start to fill in and I do find especially with the mermaid's hair that it works a lot better to, to take small amounts of clay and build it up rather than going in with one big piece. If you get any clay overhanging the edge of the mold at this stage don't worry about it we can tidy that up it helps anchor the clay to the mould as you work with the other little areas so don't worry about that I'm just going to leave that quite untidy on the edge there for now I think we'll leave that as it is now I know when I take this from the mould I'm going to end up with some little bits that are missing but as I say I've purposely done that I am however going to just fill these two little areas under it underneath her arms because the, the hair does extend past that area of where the arm's going to go so you can safely put those in at this stage. One at one side and one at the other. Now I did dust the mould out with a little bit of cornflour beforehand as well so I know that there's no moisture in there and I know it's going to be a nice easy release when we take the, the character from the mould. Right, the next thing I want to bring in a little bit of the green and fill that bikini area looking at it it's quite a shallow area to fill so I don't want too much clay so I tend to break a little bit off look at the size I'm working with and then pop that in there and then just try and press that into that area making sure that I'm not overfilling oops and going out of the line this is why I left this little area and didn't do it straight away because if you do catch it with your tool you can pull it back out so especially this cornflour in there, it stops things sticking. It's important to make sure there's no moisture in the, the mould, but it also means that things come out easier as well. So it's not difficult just to pop those back into place if you disturb them slightly. So there we are. So we've filled that area to make sure I can see the outline. And then I'm ready to go with the flesh tone. So I'm going to start with the face. Now if you're clay, and this is, this is a piece that I've been working with throughout various tutorials, so it's been out in the air, I'm just stretching it to release the moisture in it. If it becomes a little bit dry, you can do this, and it just makes it more pliable. If you find it's still a little bit dry, another tip is to keep a bottle of water. This is just a, 
a spritzer and just add a little bit of water. Just be careful not to spray any into your mould though because the clay will stick where you don't want it to stick if you get the mould wet. So I'm just going to work that in there and you can see that's nice and pliable again. Taking an amount of clay that's no bigger than the area where the head's going to go, I find that if I roll that into a nice smooth ball and then just drop that in from the top and press down, that will pick up the facial features without distorting them. And then I can add the rest of the colour. When we're happy with that, we'll start to work around with the fingertip. So I'm now pulling inwards away from the edge of the outline. So you can tidy up any little tags of clay that are overhanging and give that nice even finish. Now I do prefer the clay to have dried a little bit as I say because it makes it a lot easier for releasing it from the mould which is the next step. So using the, the outer lip I'm just going to work my way around and you can see how easily that's just coming away. The trickiest bit would be the tail but you can see again that is coming away very very cleanly. And I'm just going to work round and just ease her out. So now I'm going to show you how to fill those little areas that you've missed. And as I say, I've done this many times, so I knew exactly where I should have filled, but I, I just purposely left it to show you. So I've rolled out with the fingertips some of the um, clay that's the same colour as the hair. And using a cocktail stick, I found that the best tool, I can then fill in those little areas. So you can add extra hair, you can add extra little strands. I can see at the top of the arm there, that wants to be hidden. And you could give a little flick with the end of the clay or roll it round to match the curls in her hair. You could bring it over a shoulder a little bit. So this means that you can work with what's there but create something quite unique. So every time you make a character, she could have a different hairstyle. She could have longer hair. She could have more curls. You could chop away the hair that's beneath the arm so if you didn't want the hair to be so long. So, you know, that is entirely up to you. The idea for me when I design the moulds is that it gives you that option to be more creative, that you don't just have to work with everything that's already there for you. So I'm just going to add these extra little bits just so we can see how that's all going to come together. I'm just going to make another little curl just at the side there. But you can, you'll notice now, because I've built up the layers, when you actually release the clay from the mould, the carrot is almost finished as it is. There's not a lot to do. It's a little curl just tucked in there. And we can always sort of drag the clay up. You can see now how much neater that's beginning to look just beneath the arms there. And I'll just add some more around the side of the head as well, just to cover that area there. But it really does make a difference when you start to hide those little missed areas. So bring the hair in right next to the neck and again we'll just go around the top of that arm with a couple of little strands and we're almost there. Right we're going to now finish off with the face. So you can see the eyes, they're just little hollows, they're not ever so deep so you could just paint those in but in this case I'm going to make little eyeballs to go in. So I'm using a ball tool just to create a larger hole. So we've got something for the little uh, ball of clay to pop into. You could use a seed bead for this and just pop a little black seed bead in. But I tend to go with a little ball of white clay first and then add the black pupil and the white highlight. So taking very, very small amounts of clay. Again, I'm using a cocktail stick as a tool because it picks it up nicely and places everything where it needs to be. Look at the size of the ball tool that you made the socket with and you will know that you don't want to make a ball of clay any bigger than that tool. If it's not quite big enough you can go in and add some more. If it's too big don't press it in just take away a little bit of the clay. So if you did need to top it up very very simple just take another small amount and just fill again and then just round off with a ball tool. 
So I'm, I'm happy enough with those two. Right, then we'll go with the small amount of black, which is the pupil. So in the same way, I would roll out the fingertip and just take the smallest amount of clay and roll it into a ball and use that cocktail stick to pick it up. If you do find this quite tricky, just use a cocktail stick or a small ball tool to paint that in with acrylic paint. And a little bit in that eye. And then I'm going to round that off again, just with the ball tool, just to make sure that the two layers are stuck together. And then we're going to add the white highlight, which is the acrylic paint on the point of the cocktail stick. And I tend to go at two o'clock on one eye and 10 o'clock at the other. And then if you wanted to reposition, you can at this stage because the clay is still wet. So if you wanted to open out the tail a little bit more or bend it the other way, or in the case of the jar, which mm -hmm. I'll just bring back in, you can see how I've draped it around the top of the jar there. I built the rocks first and then sat the character in there and then draped the tail around, built the back of the hair up and then surrounded her with all her little friends. I hope you've enjoyed these tutorials and I hope you have lots of fun creating many, many projects. Use your imagination and please share all your photographs with Katie Sue Designs and myself because we love to see your work.